The Quiet Warrior Show, where we help top leaders find their pathway to incredible success and a lifetime of happiness. Here is your host, Tom Dutta, The Quiet Warrior. John McComb's top five retirement hacks in the age of COVID-19. I retired from broadcasting in mid-December of last year, 2019 all set for a life of relaxation, traveling, dining out, meeting with old friends for coffee. Ha! Two and a half months after my first pension check arrived, my wife and I are hunkered down at home with the occasional foray to social distance at the grocery store and wine shop. I'm 66. My wife, Kristen, is 76. We're right in the middle of the COVID-19 wheelhouse. So we've been closely following the instructions of our chief medical health officer to stay home. So I went from 50 years of a fast-paced, pressure-packed, and stimulating career in talk radio to a brake-screeching full stop. And here's what I learned. Number one, sleep. I finally got my sleep patterns back in order after getting up at 3 o'clock every weekday morning to go and do a morning radio show. It took me three months to get the old circadian rhythms back on schedule, and I'm still not sure that they are. The change in my energy level was profound. Sleep can become problematic as we age, so don't ignore those restless or sleepless nights. Number two, staying occupied. Uh, I had no real hobbies, except for having a cold one and watching Formula One racing or football or hockey. The thought of having all that extra time in retirement frankly made me anxious even before the pandemic hit. What was I going to do all day? Then the pandemic came along, sports went away. I couldn't even go out to the pub for a beer or Starbucks for a coffee with a friend. Yikes! So, relying on 50 years of talking into microphones, I started the John McComb podcast. I do it from home, interviewing newsmakers and experts, much like my old radio days. Not only have I learned a lot using today's technology, it keeps my mind occupied with all the writing, interviewing, editing, and producing a good podcast requires. Number three, do I have enough money to retire? Dun, dun, dun. The number one question most people thinking of retirement ask. My financial advisor and I figured if Kristen and I weren't outlandish in our spending and traveling, we'd be in pretty good shape for the long haul. Then the virus hit, and the stock market lost 30%, and the economy virtually shut down. The financial target I worked so hard to hit took a major hit. Amazingly, I was pretty zen about the whole thing. We didn't need all of our nest egg at once. We were fine. And I reasoned the markets would eventually come back and hit new highs, as they always have after a major correction. Not tomorrow, mind you, but eventually, and in time for when we need the money. I'm proud of myself for not even looking at the monthly statements from my portfolio manager. I'm living in the moment, living day by day. Number four, exercise. When I was working, uh, I hit the gym three days a week with a personal trainer. I didn't hate it. But after getting up at 3 a.m. and leaving work at about 11 a.m., I wasn't particularly keen on the workouts. But I figured it was good for me energy-wise and helped me keep the weight off. Three and a half months into retirement, and I've gained 10 pounds. Yikes! The gym is, of course, closed, so now we go for walks. Not often enough, apparently. Here's a hint. Stay active in some way. I've tried the regimen of eating an entire box of Girl Guide cookies while watching Swamp People on cable. Yeah, don't do that. It doesn't work. Nor does wolfing down a pound of peanut M&Ms either. Relationships, number five. I'm blessed to have a spouse who I love dearly and enjoy being around. I've just never tried it 24 hours a day. That was the other pre-retirement worry. I'm going from being at work seven to eight hours a day to being home all the time. What will we talk about? Will I be underfoot? What if we get tired of each other? Then the virus arrived, and now I'm supposed to stay in the house 24 hours a day. Well, as it turns out, Kristen tells me every day how happy she is that I'm home. 
and frankly, none of the worries has materialized. She's an avid gardener and a talented painter in acrylics and watercolor, and I've started turning a part of the basement into a voiceover studio for some freelance work. Again, it's all about staying occupied. And I'll even throw in a bonus hack, number six. As a person who dealt with anxiety and depression all my life, I'm very aware of my moods. After a lengthy period where I tried to deal with it myself, I finally sought help and never looked back. I know a lot of type A high-level performers in business and in media who, because of fear and stigma, never sought out help. Some of them resorted to suicide. My friend Tom Dutta is working tirelessly to change that. Check out his TED Talk on the issue and learn from a guy who has been there and done it. I get that everybody's situation is different from the next, but to me it's all about making the effort, keeping a level head, and taking care of your physical and mental health, especially what Tom calls the checkup from the neck up. Thanks for listening. Be safe and be kind. Thank you for listening to The Quiet Warrior Show. Create is a motive-based leadership development firm. www.create.ca